Welcome back to Drafting with Mark and in this video we're going to be creating this shape in AutoCAD. Now some of the things I want you to kind of look out for are what you're kind of figuring out in these and I'm trying to give you a good understanding of where to start from. And as you can see that all of my dimensions or most of them are created from this circle here. So that's kind of your basis of when you're looking for something to create you're trying to look for that start point. So I know that's one of the hardest things to kind of understand when anybody that is first starting off or they see something they go where do I start or how do I create this I always look for the shape that has probably the most dimensions on it and if you start from there that's going to be a good basis and also in this video we see that we have some numbers and they're all originating from this so this is also another good tip for you you might want to put your origin there so that's what we're going to take a look at here in AutoCAD I'll go ahead and put my origin there and we'll kind of build it from that all right so without me wasting much more of your time let's jump right into it all right so let's go ahead and do our normal things that we do let's go ahead and turn the grid off which is going to be here so i don't need that I also like to verify that my dynamic input is on. I can turn ortho on in this case, but we don't have very many orthogonal lines, but that's kind of up to you. If you want to turn either one of these on or off, we're not going to need them for this drawing. Also, let's go ahead and take a look at the running O snaps that I have turned on. And so here are the ones that I'll typically use. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I'm going to start with that circle in the middle. It has a diameter of 28. And the other one has a diameter of 35. So we're going to go with a circle, center radius. I'm going to click here and I'm going to give it a radius of 35. All right, I don't see it, so I'm just going to zoom the extents here, kind of back out just a hair. And then I'm going to go to circle, center diameter. And I'm going to go to the center of this circle here. And I'm going to type in 28. All right, let's take a look at the drawing and make sure that we do have both of those created. All right, so building this, we went ahead and created a circle that has that radius of 35 and the 28. So we have that created. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I need to locate this center point here. So I'm going to make my UCS right at the center of this circle. And I'll show you the huge benefit of doing that is that all of the rest of these are kind of going to be easy to base off of that. So I'm going to go ahead and move this UCS and the way we're going to do that is I'm going to select on the UCS. Once I get the blue grip here at the bottom, I'm going to select that. So I'm left clicking on that. I'm going to touch my circle and then I'm going to place it right here at the center. Now the benefit of doing this is that I get to place these other circles based off of this, which is at a zero zero. So when I show you the first one, you'll understand kind of why I did this. So let's go ahead and create a circle, center diameter, and now it's asking me for the location of this. So remember the X coordinate is first, and in this case I'm going to go at negative 49 because I want to go to the left in the X, X direction. Then I'm going to type in comma, and then how far I want to go up in the Y direction is going to be 19. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and then it's going to ask me to go ahead and type in my diameter, and I'm just reading this off of the command line here at the bottom. So my diameter for this one is going to be 18. I'll go ahead and select it there. And then let's go ahead and put our circle that has a radius of 20 around it. So I'm going to go to circle, center radius. I'm going to select that center. And then I'm going to type in the radius of 20. All right. So let's flip back to the drawing and see that we did, and create, that we did create both of these, right? So I needed to go this direction, and remember, anytime you're going left on the x-axis, and that's going to be this number here, that's going to be 49, and I want to go in the y direction, which is a positive 19, right? All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build this circle, right? The way that we're going to do this is that, remember that I'm going no direction on the x, so that x component will be 0. The y component here will be 88, right? So we're going to build a circle that has a 0x component that's 88 up and we have a radius of 11 and a diameter of 14 so those are going to be the next circle that I'm going to create 
All right, so let's go ahead and place our circle that has a radius, so circle center radius. And like I was saying, so these are showing me the positive directions for the X and the Y. I have a zero component for the X, comma, and I want to go 88 in the Y direction. So that's going to send it up 88. Once I hit enter, now it's going to look for the, either the diameter or the radius. And at the bottom on my command line and right next to it is showing I need a radius. So I'm going to type in 11. And then I'm going to go back to circle center diameter. And then I'm going to place a circle here. And this one has a diameter of 14. All right. So the next circle that I should be able to build is going to lie somewhere here, which is actually this circle, right? So I need to go 48 to the right. And then I need to go 19 up in the Y component, right? So we're going to do both of those. I have the outside circle has a radius of 20 and now this two times is referring to a circle here and also one down here and I also have a inside circle that has a radius of 11 right but I'm only going to create the circle that's located here you can see that this one at the bottom I have to do some other manipulations in order to get that one well we'll, we'll conquer that one when we get to it all right, so we're going to go over to our circle, center radius. I'm going to put in my components. Remember, I'm going 48 in the X direction, comma, and I want to go 19 in the Y direction. So I'm going up. I'll go ahead and hit enter. The radius of my outside circle is set to 20. Let's go back to circle, center radius. I'm going to click here. And then the inside circle has a radius of 11. All right. So now we have those circles. Let's go ahead and work on the one here at the bottom. All right, and let's go ahead and see what those coordinates are. All right, so we're gonna go down in the Y direction, so we do not have an X component. So remember that our X component will be zero. The Y component is gonna be 60, so we're gonna go down 60, and we're gonna make a circle with a radius of 22, and one that has a diameter of 22. So we're going to circle, center radius. I'm going to type in zero comma. Remember our Y component in this one is a negative 60 because we need to go down. I went zero in the X direction and down a negative 60. Go ahead and hit your enter. And then it's going to ask me for the radius, which is going to be 22. Then I'll go to circle, center diameter. I'm just going to touch the outside here and then I'll click on this center. I always like to kind of preview my circle by moving my cursor. I'll type in 22. Go ahead and hit enter. Now, one good thing we have going on is that our inside circle here is the exact same size as this circle. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate and create a copy of this circle here. And then I can copy this circle and place it here. Now, one of the easiest things that you can use is going to be the grips, and I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and go to rotate. The object that I'm going to rotate is going to be this object. Go ahead and hit enter once you're done selecting all your objects. It's asking me for a base point right now. So I want everything to go around this center. So I'm just going to touch and then I'll click on this center. Make sure you go down and select the word copy. And remember that AutoCAD goes counterclockwise, right? So I'm going to type in 40 since that 40 is going counterclockwise. Now I have my circle here. What I was men mentioning to you before, we can go ahead and use grips to create and place our other circle on here. So I'm going to select this circle. I'm going to select this center grip. I'm going to go down to the word copy. And then I'm just going to simply click at this center. Go ahead and hit escape. Now I know it said stretch on the command line for when I was using the grips. But if you stretch a circle from the center point, it's a move. And if you select the word copy, it becomes a copy. All right, let's go ahead and create these lines that are located on here. So I'm going to start off with the line. And I want that line to be tangent to here and here. So I'm going to shift right click, choose tangent, click on here. Shift right click again, go to tangent, click here. Go ahead and escape out of this command. Go back to the line command. And do the exact same step we just did. Shift right click. Choose tangent. Select this circle here. Shift right click again. Choose tangent. And select that circle there. Alright, I'm going to escape out. 
Let's go ahead and work on this top half. We're going to start off by creating a line from this center. And I'm going to go out this direction, right? Now, I will turn my ortho on because this is the kind of first straight line that I am going to need. So I'm just going to select ortho here. I'm going to aim at this direction. I'm going to type in 22, enter, and then I'm just going to come down. Now, it doesn't matter how far you come down, but just make sure you just kind of come down a little bit. You can see on my screen, I'm roughly around 35. If you want to type in a number to be accurate, but I'm just going to click here. I'm going to do the exact same thing along the other side here. So I'm going to go to line. I'm going to click on this endpoint. I'm going to go this direction, 22, enter, and then I'm going to come down here, do a left click, and then escape. All right. So once I've done that, I needed this line here in order to create the fillet. The fillet would be too short if I tried to go from this circle to here. So let's go ahead and put those two big fillets that we have on here. All right, so in here, let's go ahead and check off some things that we already done. We did the 20 here. And we have, let's see, the 40 degrees is gone. And we just did the 22 lines. All right, so let's go ahead and put the fillets that have a radius of 44. We have two of them. So that's going to be one here and one along here. And then we're going to go ahead and put the 16s on, which is going to be here and here. And that should just leave us with trimming this out. Oh, I'll also put that one on there first. That was one of the first ones I did. So we're going to do the radius of 16 and one radius of 44. Let's jump over and finish this up. Okay, I'm going to go to the fillet command. I'm going to choose radius. I'm going to type in 44, enter. And then I'm going to select the word multiple. Then I'm going to select somewhere along this circle right in here. And then that line. I'm going to come over here and then that line. I'm going to go back down to radius. I'm going to type in 16, enter. I'm going to select multiple again. And then I'm going to select this circle here and that circle and then this circle here and then that circle let's go ahead and escape out of this command i'm going to zoom the extents real quick and then we're going to get the trimming so let's go to trim and then i'm going to trim off this outside portion the lines in between here and here and then i do have a little line here as well as here let's go ahead and work on this circle here so i'm just going to trim off around here I'm going to do the exact same thing here at the bottom. So I like to trim those two lines that are overlapping. And then I'll take off my two circles that are located here. Let's go ahead and trim off here. And then the last thing I'm going to do is trim off here. Okay. Now I need one more thing to do. I need to go ahead and turn this into a slot. So this is where I like to use the offset command and I'm going to use it a little bit more interesting. So let me go ahead and zoom into this location. I'm going to go to offset and I want to use this line instead of creating two lines that are tangent to here again. So I'm going to go offset. The first thing I need to do is figure out what that distance is. Well, that distance happens to be the same distance from this quadrant. So select this quadrant over to that quadrant. So if I specify the distance just by selecting those two quadrants, I don't have to worry about a number. And now I can select this line, click here. Go to the escape command, go back to offset. And then I'm going to offset this line over to this. That length happens to be the diameter of these circles, right? So I'm just going to select this quadrant and then that quadrant. Let's go ahead and select this line here and then click it here. All right, let me zoom out a little bit and then let's go ahead and trim this. And then one of the last things I want to do is I just want to go ahead and put the UCS back to the correct location. So where it says unnamed, I'm going to select the drop down and then I'll select WCS. Let's go ahead and zoom the extents. And hopefully you enjoyed watching this video of me creating this shape. Um, if this is something that you like looking at, please consider to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.